part one of our for loop series and this is going to be an introduction into for loops and how we can use for loops in a program so we're going to talk about iteration program first so we've learned that code is executed in multiple ways and we've learned about the word sequential we did a series on selection and now we're learning about iteration so let's just recap that quickly so sequential programming is basically the word sequence in other words the code is run in a particular sequence the way that you write it so if you've got a line of code and then a second line and then a third line it will execute in the order that you give it so the, in that flow chart there you can see it's first get num1 then get num2 and then add them and then display them you've got to do code in the correct sequence so then we moved on to selection programming that's when we decided to, or said we only want to do certain code based on certain conditions so we would get a value and then we would ask a question and based on the answer of that question we determine if we did one set of code or another set of code so that's what we did in our selection programming series now we're moving on to iteration now iteration just basically means we want to do a particular set of code a multiple number of times we want to repeatedly do code um, so we almost loop in the code now there are lots of types of loops in programming and today we're going to learn about a particular loop where we know exactly how many times we want to do the loop so let's look at an example of that in a flowchart format so let's say we've got a variable accounting variable which starts off being a one and we ask the question is that count variable at 10 yet now when it starts off being one obviously it's not at 10 yet so it's, it's a one so it's not a 10 yet. so what happens is we will then do the code that we want to do repeatedly so this is the, the code that we want to loop and then we will increase that counter by one so now it'll become a two and we will go back up you can see that little circle that's the loop go back up to the question are we at, at 10 yet well we are two so no we're not at 10 yet so we will do the code again and increase it to a three and then do the code again and increase it to four when we finally get to 10 we are equal to 10 we'll do the code for the last time increase it to 11 now we are not less than equal to 10 when we have reached beyond the loop the loop is now finished we will then migrate out of the loop and do the code that happens after it so that's an example of a loop in this case especially a loop where we know exactly how many times we want to do the loop so let's look at the structure of a for loop so we start off with the word for and then after the word for we will have a looping variable that was like in our uh, example with the flowchart that was our count variable some sort of looping variable and that's going to be the variable that's going to be going one two three four and so on or whatever many times now that looping variable must be an ordinal type if you've forgotten what ordinal means looping variable of type ordinal ordinal means an order in other words an integer or a character something that we know what the next value is going to be so integers and, and char variables are your types of things that you can use as a looping variable then you can have the assigned statement so it's and you can then have the start value what value do we want to start the looping variable at it doesn't always have to be a one maybe you want to loop from eight onwards and so you have what value you want to start your looping variable and then you have the word two followed by the value that the looping variable must get to so if i want to go from one to ten so then your start would be a one and your end would be a ten and then after the end uh, value you will have a do operator okay and then after that you have your statement that you want to repeatedly do so that's what a for loop looks like so the for loop will repeatedly do that statement however many times um, for that that you specified for that loop okay but just a little tip here don't put a semicolon after the do because then you are saying do nothing so many times so remember don't a lot of people accidentally put a semicolon after the do and then all of a sudden their loop doesn't work it's because you've basically asked the loop to do nothing so many times okay now in this case let's say we've got two statements that we want to do this loop will only run the first statement multiple times that second statement will not be attached to the loop now just like our selection program with if statements if we want to have multiple statements that we want to run inside the loop what do we use we put it in a begin and end my suggestion is to always use a begin and end so that you can see when the loop begins and see when the loop ends so that you can if you add stuff to the loop you know exactly where to put it so that's just a little hint of suggestion i recommend that you do it it will make your life easier when you get to bigger more complex programs 
So let's look at some examples. Let's say we've got a memo control and we want to display the word hello. And actually, I want to display it another time. Let's say it twice. Maybe not twice. Let's do it three times. You know what? I'm going to display it five times. Display the word hello five times in the memo. So there you can see five lines of code. It'll look something like that. Fantastic. Now, what I'm, you see, I'm basically doing the same thing five times. I'm doing the same code. When you're doing the same code the same, multiple times, why not just put it in a loop? So in that case, I'm saying, okay, well, I'm doing it five times. So I'm going to loop. And there's my looping variable, R. There will be obviously some sort of integer that I declared. You must declare your for loop variable. I'm declaring R as uh, integer. And I'm saying for I equals one to five, because that's how many times I want to repeat the code. Begin and end, because I said you must have always have a begin. And we can say memo one dot lines dot add hello. So I'm just writing the memo one dot lines add hello once. And it's going to repeatedly do that five times. And I put it in the begin end just because that's a good rule. And that will produce the same results. And you might go, Mr. Long, but you've got four lines of code and you've only saved one line. I know that. But imagine if I had to print hello a thousand times. Now, all I have to do for this code is change that five to a thousand and it will work. Where if you go the way that we just did it before, we'd have to type in memo one dot lines or add hello a thousand times. That's a lot of waste of time. So there we go. So that loop is repeatedly displaying the word hello five times. Okay, fantastic. So let's take, another, let's take another example. Let's say I'm going to go from 1 to 10. Okay. We put our begin and our ending. And I'm going to display something. What am I going to display? Let's think about it. I'm going to display i, the variable i. Now you might go, what's the variable? <gasps> look, look at the for loop variable. The for loop variable, the looping variable is an i. So I want to display the for loop variable. But what type of variable is that? That's a, I think that's an integer. Yeah, that's an integer. So we can't display i in a memo control because memo controls in strings. So I'm probably going to have to put an into string around it. There we go. So I'll do that. So I'm going to display i. Whatever the value of i is, whatever the value of the for loop variable is, I want to display it. What does that mean? Well, i will start off being a 1. Because that's the first part of the, the for loop variable. And then we will display it. And then i will become a 2. And then we will display it. And then i will become a 3. And then we display it. And then it'll be a 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And display each one of those. And then it'll become a 10, and then we'll display the 10, and then we've now reached the end of our for loop, our for loop will stop. And then, so there we go. We've now displayed all the values from 1 to 10 by just displaying our for loop variable. So that's a nice little trick. Now let's take another example. Um, exactly the same scenario, exact same code, but look at that, look at the for loop variable, look at the 1 to 10. I'm going to change that around. I want to display from 10 to 1. Now, the way a for loop works is it looks, it sets the i variable to the, the starting value and it checks if it is less than the ending value. And that's how it will keep doing the loop. The moment the i variable is bigger than the end value, the loop will not execute. So that's how it knows when to stop. Now, this is a problem here because i starts off being a 10 and then it checks and goes, is 10 um, less than one, it's not. So therefore, it will not run this code because the loop is finished. It's already reached the end. It's, it's a 10. It needs to go till one. It won't run. So this code will actually do nothing, which is not what I want. But I want to go from 10 to one. I'm going to go backwards, which you can do if you change the two to a down two. If you use a down two, that means your starting value must be a really big number and your end value must be a smaller number. If you use a two operator, you remember your start value must be a small number and your end value must be a bigger number. But in this case, it doesn't check if the R value is, um, is, is greater than to stop. It looks when it's less than to stop. Okay, so in this case, R will start off being a 10 and it will display the R value, which is 10. Then in the down two, it doesn't increase by one. It decreases by one. So in this case, R will now become a 9 and display 9. Then R will become an 8, display 8. And then R will become a 7, 8, 9, 10, or not 7, 8, 9, 10, sorry, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, or 2, sorry. And then display the 2. And then it will become a 1, display the 1. And now we are at the end of the loop and it will then stop. So that's how you can go backwards if you want to use a for loop. Let's do another example. What happens if we use this scenario where we have a C variable 
and that C variable is of type char. Remember, I said char is ordinal, it means letters, one, one character at a time. Um, that's ordinal because if I have an A, I know the next letter is going to be a B and so on. So there we go from A to F, and we are going to display the C uh, variable in a memory control. But because C is a character, which is basically a string of size one, it can fit. We don't need to convert it when we display it in a memory control. And what's going to happen there is C is going to start off being a small a, and then display the a, and then it's going to be a b, come a b, display the b, come c, display the c, come e, I mean d e, and then an f, and display f. And so that's basically what's going to happen if we use a character. We don't really use characters a lot, but in the one percent of the time that you do, you know how to use it now. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm just to take note that we used uh, actual static numbers and um, characters in our for loop, you can use variables. So for example, you can go from one to r num, but just remember that if r is an integer and you're using variables as part of your limits for your starting end, remember that that r num must be of the same type, in this case an integer, must be an ordinal type. Um, so we go from one to r num. So in this way we can let the user type in a value for r num and then the loop will run um, that many times that the user wants. So we can even make it quite dynamic that way. Um, and we don't even need to start at one. We could say, hey, you know what? We've got two variables, um, the start and the end variable. And as long as those two variables are of type integer. So there we go. That'll help. So let's go look at this in an actual Delphi program. So here we've got our program. We can see I've got a loop memo control. We've got a for loop from one to 10. All I'm doing is I'm clearing the memo and I'm displaying from one to 10 the word hello. That's all I'm doing. Fantastic. Very easy program, nothing too complicated. It's fine. It always takes so long to, to run my programs. It's all the anticipation. There we go, it's running. Let's have a look. So when I display one to 10, it's gonna go and display the word hello 10 times. Mm -hmm. Boom, hello 10 times. A lot easier than typing that 10 times. Now I could actually go, you know what, I'm gonna change that to a R variable, whatever the R variable is, the integer. But remember, that's an integer, and we remember control needs a string, so I'm going to copy it from an int to a string. There we go. Let's run it now. And now we will see B, 1 to 10. Fantastic. And I could even change this to 100 if I wanted to, and it will display from, it will display from 1 to 100. Look at all those numbers. Fantastic. Um, I don't. I can set these values to whatever I want. I can say from eight to twelve, for example, if I was doing like high schools, high school grades. There we go. So you can do all those types of things. Um, so basically, if I go from one to ten, the R value starts off being a one, and it will continually increasing by one and running this code. Do the code, increase by one. Do the code, increase by one. And the moment it'll continue increasing, the moment R gets bigger than that number. So eventually it'll get bigger than that, and then we'll say, okay, we can stop doing it because we've reached the limit. Yes, but let's happen. What happens if we go from 10? Oh, wait, I want to first show you that semicolon. If I put a semicolon here, what, what is it going to do? It's going to do nothing 10 times, and then displays 11. So basically, remember I said that increase, so it's going to do, I was going to become a 1, do nothing, then 2, do nothing, up until 10, do nothing. It increases it to the point where it gets to 11, so it knows when to stop. So outside of the loop, it's just going to display R. Oh, that's why it's just displaying the 11. It's displaying the looping variable after the loop is finished. So you see it reaches one above it, but it's basically doing nothing 10 times. That's not what I want to do. Okay, so that's why you don't put a semicolon there. You want to put a semicolon there, because you can do all this code. And let's change this to a 10 until 1. And I'll run it now. It's also going to do nothing. It's not going to display the 11. It does nothing because it goes, oh, it's a 10. Are we above one? Uh, yes, we are. So therefore, don't do the loop because we must only do it while we're less than that one. So that's not going to work. But if we change that to a down two, let's run it now. There we go. One, no, 10, 9, 8. It's like a final countdown. Fantastic. I don't even you know that song, the final countdown. Number one song played at New Year's Day. Let's look at this one where we use a character. A char variable, they are used in a capital A to capital F. If you're using uh, letters, remember to use all small letters, or all uh, big letters, depending on what you want to do. So there I'm just displaying A, B, C, D, E, F, whatever the char variable is. Fantastic. 
then over here we've got two values from spin edits and i'm going to get the one value from the spin edit, the other value from the other and we're going to have our loop go from whatever the start value is to the end value so if we go from one to five it's going to r one's going to go into the start variable five's going to go into the end it's going to go from one to five there we go and then if i change this up to whatever numbers i want 100 and let's say from 50 to 100 then it will display from 50 to 100 whatever we decide the key thing about a for loop variable or not for loop variable but a for loop is that it knows how many times it wants to repeat the code and it knows this before the for loop technically starts so although we are changing what the values are in the program by the time the for loop starts it knows exactly how many times it's going to do the loop when you learn about other loops though for other special cases when you don't know but in this case if you know how many times you want to repeatedly do a certain section of code use a for loop for more videos on for loops in this for loop series we're going to do a couple of examples in the next couple of videos as well as other information on delphi related and rt related content go to our youtube channel subscribe follow us on youtube oh no, oh, subscribe to us on youtube follow us on facebook and follow us on twitter and remember don't do it the long way do it the mister <laughs>